One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. The difference of this first uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing, it changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who exactly. are changed. Yeah. And of yeah. course, this has a big impact yeah. on your identity. Yeah. Editing your genes? Cool. <laughs> I'll explain that later. But first, why do so many people consider this guy, Klaus Schwab, to be the most dangerous man in the world? Well, there's some reasons, a lot of them. You might remember Klaus Schwab as the puddle of liquefied feces who said, by 2030, you'll own nothing and be happy about it. Translated, that probably means by 2030, he'll own everything and he'll be happy about it. But how does he expect you to own nothing and be happy about it? Oh, he's got a plan. Now, I'll tell you about it in a minute. But before I do, a little bit about Klaus Schwab. He's the author of COVID-19, The Great Reset. What a grand opportunity indeed. Oh, and his book was published on July 9th, 2020. <laughs> Wonder how he got it written and published that fast. It's almost like maybe he pre-wrote it before he started the pandemic. I mean, before the pandemic started. Old Klaus is also the founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum an organization that faces the public with very noble sounding goals of creating a better world. Fear mongering about climate change and disease are big goals of theirs. Welcome to Davos. Just park your private jet over there and then go inside and pretend to be concerned about climate change. Klaus and the World Economic Forum want a worldwide digital ID system that determines your access to goods and services. It would monitor your online behavior, purchases, and biometrics. It kind of seems like he just wants to do away with the whole democratic process and give all the power to the state and whoever runs the state, the deep state. But that's based on both his words and actions, so it's probably an inaccurate observation. Was Dr. Evil's character based on this reptile? Mr. Schwab writes the following. One of the greatest lessons of the past five centuries in Europe and America is this. A acute crisis contribute to boosting the power of the state. It's always been the case, and there is no reason why it should be different with a <laughs> pandemic. Nobody ever elected Klaus Schwab to anything. This all just sounds like conspiracy, doesn't it? The World Economic Forum are good guys. Haven't you seen the headlines they pay for? Go green, right? Right? That's probably right. They truly are good guys. Accordingly, you'll be excited to hear that the lineup of World Economic Forum speakers at their annual gathering of elites in Davos included such benevolent humanitarians like Xi Jinping, the leader of the Chinese Communist Party, who's currently committing genocide, Anthony Fauci, who's arguably currently involved in crimes against humanity, and Bill Gates, who's arguably currently involved in crimes against humanity, and Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who's arguably currently involved in crimes against humanity. What a great lineup. But my favorite economic forum speaker of all time is this reptile, Klaus Schwab's top advisor, Dr. Yuval Noah Harari. Let's see what he has to say. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. Elites hacking organisms and re-engineering life itself? Well, he's not talking about doing that to people, is he? Now, in the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to do it, but nobody understood biology well enough, and nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither the Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. But soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. Well, I guess he was talking about doing that to people. All people, to be specific. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity. This will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life four billion years ago. 
For four billion years, nothing fundamental changed. Not playing God, are you? Because that usually works out super well. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some God above the clouds. Oh, you are playing God. Say more. Evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some God above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. Gosh, you wouldn't by chance have a plan in place on how to control people with your cloud technology, would you? And that plan isn't by chance already being implemented, is it? Today, we have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. Oh, so you could implement it. In this time of crisis, you have to follow science. It's often said that you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste. Sounds familiar. And I guess you are implementing it already. Didn't anyone bother telling this guy not to say any of this out loud on camera? It's, it's just, it's a lot of evidence. Surveillance, people could look back in a hundred years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin. <laughs> my brain, my body, my life, does it belong to me or to some corporation or to the government or perhaps to the human collective? This guy's revealing the whole plan. He's gonna ruin it. The World Economic Forum, out for the good of humanity. You'll own nothing, not even your own DNA we have our way. Now for some additional fun facts about Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. They've got a Young Leaders Program, which is a five-year indoctrination program into their principles. The goal of the program is to create world leaders who don't answer to their people because they don't care about them. They answer to their bosses at the World Economic Forum. Graduates of the program include admirable world leaders that are suspicious Preciously in lockstep with a great reset, such as Justin Trudeau, Francis Macron, and Mark Zuckerberg. Sponsoring partners of the World Economic Forum's Young Global Leaders Program have been the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Google. I wonder why Google censors and shapes information to be in exact support of the World Economic Forum's narrative. Hmm. Oh, another fun fact. The World Economic Forum is predicting a worldwide cyber attack. I'm pretty much a wizard at predicting the things I'm gonna do too. The very concerned Schwab believes the cyber attack could bring a complete halt to our power grid, transportation, hospital services, and to our society as a whole. The World Economic Forum then simulated the cyber attack. Simulated or planned? I'm not sure, but they said it was a simulation, so it's probably best to just believe them. Oh, also the World Economic Forum, along with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, hosted Event 201, which oddly enough played out exactly as they planned, or simulated, or whatever. Let's move on. And here's a picture of Klaus Schwab sitting in front of his statue of Vladimir Lenin. I wonder why he's got a statue of one of the most murderous world leaders in history. Lenin killed an estimated 5 million people. And finally, remember Schwab's whole thing about you'll own nothing and be happy about it? What's the World Economic Forum's plan to make that happen? Well, it's probably nothing, but consider this. BlackRock is an investment firm with $9 trillion under management, which is a higher GDP than every country on earth, aside from the US and China. Therefore, it turns out BlackRock has more political and financial influence than the Federal Reserve and most governments. Sounds cool, but what's the connection with a World Economic Forum? <laughs> well, again, and it's probably nothing, but BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink, is also just a board member of the World Economic Forum. Well, that's super convenient and probably just a coincidence. Is the World Economic Forum and BlackRock colluding in corporatism where an unelected corporate elite dictates top down to the population? Well, they couldn't be doing that because they'd have to infiltrate the government, which they haven't done. Except for, in one of Joe Biden's first appointees once he took office, he named Brian Deese to be the director of National Economic Council. Brian Deese came from BlackRock, where he was a global head of sustainable investing, and now he's Biden's main advisor for economic policy. <laughs> 
Biden's making the policy decisions, not the unelected corporate elites at BlackRock and the World Economic Forum. Of course Biden's making all the decisions. Let's not be silly. Oh look, there's a picture of Biden in the audience at the World Economic Forum. Oh, and also Kamala Harris's chief economic advisor is Michael Pyle. He came from BlackRock, where he was a global chief economic strategist overseeing the strategy for investing $9 trillion. Well, it looks like corporatism, but it's probably not. But if it was, it would actually be a viable strategy for BlackRock and the World Economic Forum to own everything and for you to own nothing. Oh, fun fact, BlackRock is buying up single family homes at an alarming rate, oftentimes paying 20 to 50% above asking price. So normal people like you and I can't own the homes. Now, there is an interesting pattern to all this. You know how you hear about ancient tyrannical rulers who would rule over their dumb people by saying things like, yeah, if you don't do all of this slave labor and let me sleep with your wives, then God's gonna make you all perish in a deadly storm. Well, God told me, and because I'm elite, I have access to this knowledge and you don't. So you better do as I say, or you're gonna die. Well, us peasants can't perceive what the king can, so we better do as he says. Go ahead and bang my wife. And thank you for doing it for my protection, King. Good old fear-mongering, a predictable pattern as old as time itself. But with Klaus in the World Economic Forum, it's climate change is gonna kill you, disease is gonna kill you, and a cyber attack's gonna get ya. So you better do as we say, or you're gonna die. I don't know, the weather looks pretty good to me. Why don't you ever smile, Klaus? You look like a sociopath. No, you don't understand. We elites have access to knowledge that you don't. So you better listen to us or you're gonna die. Same old fun pattern of fear mongering. They know of the scary problems and only they have the solutions. So listen up or you're gonna die. <laughs> gotcha, Klaus, nothing new here. We see you. In conclusion to the question, is Klaus Schwab the most dangerous man in the world? Here's his top guy again. Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Free will, that's over. It will indeed be over. Jesus is coming sooner than any of us could possibly imagine. He's going to come in the rapture for his bride as a thief in the night. And today is the day of salvation. And it's the gospel of salvation found in the person of Jesus Christ. And it's so childlike simple. Jesus said that in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must become like a child. It's so childlike, not childish. It's just simple. A, B, C simple. It's actually just B simple. The A is for admit or acknowledge that you've sinned. Because unless and until you do, why would you be interested in a savior if you don't acknowledge that you're a sinner? Romans 3.10 says there is no one righteous, not even one. And Romans 3.23 explains why. It's because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We were all born sinners, which is why we must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Romans 6.23. What I really like about this verse is that it packages the bad news first with the good news. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news is that the wages of sin is death. It's the death penalty. We all carry in our sin all a death sentence because of sin. That's the bad news. But here's the good news. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Gift? Gift. What do you do with a gift? Not me gift. I'm not talking about that. You receive it. It's a gift. Who paid for it? Jesus paid for it. In full. And it cost him everything. Even his life. He purchased us with his shed blood in our stead. And we are not our own, but we are purchased with the price. And he paid the price, and he offers this gift that he paid for to us, and it's the gift of eternal life. Just to receive and believe. <laughs> That's the beat. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. The most well-known verse in all of the Bible, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe would not perish in hell for all eternity, but have everlasting life in heaven with him. Believe. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Pretty simple. Here's the C, and this is what comes from the B. It's this expression of calling 
upon the name of the Lord, confessing with your mouth, as Romans 10, 9 and 10 also says. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, and here's why. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And Romans 10, 13, lastly, seals the deal. All who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved.